Hi, I'm Holly, and with my sister Heather, you're listening to Haunted Family Podcast, a weekly podcast about the mind mysteries and even some true crime. Literally, it's been so long, I forgot how our intro went. <laughs> we um, skipped a week. Actually, we skipped two weeks. Did well, we? it feels like we skipped two weeks. Maybe it was just a week. It happened. I mean, I can breathe again, so I mean, that's good. Um, I made my first trip to the great state of North Carolina. Woo! Picked up eight complete beehives, minus the bees. Well, I made a trip to the location that we're talking about tonight. You did? I did, and I don't normally dress up. For you guys, tonight is a very special episode, and I am wearing my USAF hat, wearing a USAF t-shirt, drinking out of a USAF cup. Because guess what we're talking about tonight? USAF. Yes, we are talking about. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, listeners. If you're sitting there puzzled right now, wondering what in the world USAF is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're about to tell you because it's funny. It is funny. Okay, so um, several episodes ago, we were talking about. I think it was time lapse. It was. I think it was that episode. And at, during the entire episode, I kept referring to the Royal Air Force as RAF. Because it did not register to me that that's what that was. We are good halfway through the episode, and I say Royal Air Force, and Holly <laughs> screams, "Oh my God, that's what it stands for!" So ever since then, we have called our Air Force USAF. So. Good times. And I think it's funny. And tonight's episode is about a very special place in the USAF. Yes. Okay. So, about, what, three-ish hours from me? Maybe. Oh, I, I, can, I can pull it up. I think it's about three hours, though. Yeah. I mean, I literally was there last week. And I was there and well, I was in that town and filmed stuff. About a month ago. Yeah. I mean, I was actually on base. And I got to tell you a funny story about um, about that. So. We are. I, I am 155 miles from this place. Okay. I don't Four know. Four hours. I think I'm. So, I'm about three. Well, anyway. So, um, my boyfriend uh, was in the Air Force. And he was having surgery on base and I volunteered to take him up for his surgery so um, I have to have a pass to get on base and because that's where the hospital is and he had put in paperwork for me to be able to get this and we go and uh, okay first they said put your finger on this little device that like scans your finger and of course like I stick my thumb on it (laughs) because your thumb is a finger right yes anyway so um the the guy whose window we were at thought that was funny uh but then he said that I like typically they give out 30 day passes but I could not get a 30 day pass I could only get a one day pass. So clearly, Holly is on some sort of government list. Right. They had to get special permission because the surgery was actually the next day at like five o'clock in the morning. So I had to get special permission to be able to come back the next day. And I don't know what I did. I mean, unless it's this podcast. I know that I am on, that I am probably on government lists. But I have done nothing. True. But anyway, but so, you, but your oldest daughter is probably on the same list that I am, 
because of the events that I've taken her to. Probably. Oh, and so no. maybe nothing that's... like sinister or anything. We are American Civil War reenactors. Yeah. <laughs> but not me. But the but considering, you know, we basically play military on the weekends, some members of the government find that a little questionable. Honestly, we're just nerds who freak out over fabric. I did I did I've done nothing. You have but I mean, I joked that it was because I stepped on the grass as I was walking in the building. And Ernie told me that I'm not allowed to step on the grass. But you know what? I did it anyway. I don't know. But anyway, I was able to get a pass and take him to the hospital the next day for his surgery. So if you're just going to the museum there, do you still need a pass? No, you don't. And, oh my God, we have to talk about the museum. Actually, we did not even tell them what base this is. Oh. But, yeah, we did not. We are talking about Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. Wright-Patterson is partially named after um, the Wright brothers, who um, did a lot of testing for the airplane on what is now part of Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. But you didn't know that. I did not know that. Back to your story. Okay. Anyway, it's really, really, really cool. And, um... This is coming from my sister who hates history. Yes, I do. Actually, and, yeah. I totally hate history. Like, completely hate history. I'm surprised that she researches for this podcast because she hates history. Well, I mean, some of this research was I was there. And that always makes it so much more interesting. And two, even if even if I had not been dating Ernie, the Air Force is my favorite branch. I mean, Dad was in it. Papa was in the Army Air. You know, I mean, it's kind of a family. You know, Shirley's older brother was also in the Air Force. So, museum. Yes. Okay. I actually, hold on. One more story. One more story. I promise. Just this <laughs> last sidetrack. Okay. So, you guys know how I have an Etsy shop? And it's called... What? Cat- you have an Etsy shop? I do. I have an Etsy shop. Cat Hair Glitter. Um, and I had two packages to drop off at the post office before, like, on our way to Wright Pat. And so I was really, really, really excited because one of the packages that I was dropping off was a swim team shirt, but it was going to Roswell, New Mexico. What? What happened in Roswell, New Mexico? Well, I mean, aliens crash landed in Roswell. Exactly. And then, wait, hold on. But then the government loaded up the crashed um, spacecraft and trucked it across country to Hangar 18 at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Yes. I'm sorry, Wright Patterson USAF. And I was so, actually, I did not even know about, I'm not joking. I had no clue about Hangar 18 or aliens. I knew none of that when I was, I was just excited that somebody from Roswell, New Mexico brought a shirt. And if you are listening and you are from Roswell, New Mexico, and you see somebody with a swim team like shirt on, you should ask them if they got it from Cat Hair and Glitter. And that might scare them a little bit. But I was just really, really excited because I just thought that was really cool. If you, you know what? If you want a really cute shirt made, Holly can I make can, you And I have a up. sublimation set up that will be completely set up later this week. And I'm flipping out excited about it. But anyway, so that's just a side that we are going to talk about Hangar 18. But the whole alien thing. We were walking into the museum, and I was telling him how excited I was about selling this shirt to somebody in New Mexico, at Roswell, and he was like, I didn't even think you cared about aliens. And I was like, what? I mean, I believe in aliens. I don't normally get super excited about aliens, but like, I don't know. This just seems really, really cool. So we walk in the museum, and there is, I'm not joking, an Area 51 exhibit inside the little gift shop with little plush aliens and I had to take my picture with one. That's all. Awesome. So in 1988 um, 
U.S. Senator Barry Goldwater asked General Curtis LeMay if he could get special access to the secret UFO room at Rob Patterson Air Force Base. Oh, so we're just going to jump right in and talk about the aliens. And he was told, and he was told, not only can you not get into it, but don't you ever mention it again. Do, do, do. That's my best alien tones. So, um, the government has, and it came out very recently that um, the government has sank millions of dollars into UFO research. Uh, I'm sure most people have heard of Project Blue, Bar Blue Book. Um, there was also Project Grudge in the 40s. And, sorry, I've been sick this week. And my notes are horrendous to read. Okay, see, I didn't know nothing about any of that. Yeah, there was also Project Sun. And most recently, with the help of a very unlikely member of the government, Harry Reid. I think he's from, like, Arizona, Nevada, maybe? New Mexico. I don't remember. Oh, is he? I don't know. I'm just... Why are you I'm listening to me? This. I don't know. <laughs> he is the senator from Nevada, and he retired in 2007. Actually, I think he was voted out, but we'll say retired. That over five years, the Department of Defense sank $22 million into a program to gather information on unidentified aerial phenomenon. Cool. I totally, I mean, I totally believe that there are aliens. It would be vain of us to think that we're the only living anything in the entire galaxy. Exactly. Well, they probably did not let you in Hangar 18 to see the mummified corpses of the Area 51 aliens. I, I was not. I was actually only allowed on half of the base. I wasn't. I was not. I didn't even have access to the entire base because I'm apparently a bad person. I'm not a bad person. Anyway, while we were there, we did get to hang out with some of his friends, and I grilled for stories because, you know, we're doing this episode, and I need stories. I thought, why, you know, why not ask people who are there every day? And I was told that, yes, it is super creepy when you are over around Hangar 18, especially at night. And that there is a door in the ground. Did any of them have high enough access to get into Hangar 18? No. Could they get close enough to the building to touch the building? Yes. Yes, they could touch the building. They just could not go inside the building. Do they know anybody who had clearance to go in? Uh, not that they told me. Hmm. Huh. Uh, but... Okay, this this quote totally came from the internet, not anybody that we talked to, but it made me laugh. So, it was, the, the quote is, as I recall, uh, there is no UFO. They just have the bodies of the aliens who died when their spaceship crashed. I'm pretty sure they are in a refrigerated vault underground. That is why the rooms on the surface look so benign. Occasionally, science... Scientists take out DNA samples from the corpses and use them to create super soldier test serums that they distribute to the populace as flu vaccine. It's no biggie. Oh, yeah, no biggie. <laughs> Never get another flu vaccine. Oh, wait, maybe I'm going to take all the flu vaccines now. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, I laughed out loud because I know that that person is just being a trolling asshole, but I can't help it. It was just funny. But there are, I have seen accounts online. And, you know, you take everything that you read online with a huge salt block. Like what you would put out for horses. Right. That there are as many as 16 alien bodies at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Yeah, I do. I cannot confirm or deny. But, you know, what better place to hide alien technology than Ohio? I know. You remember when you were, like, in middle school and you were totally alien obsessed and you wanted to go to Roswell so freaking bad. Who knew that you only had to go four hours up the road? I still. You know what? I still want to go to Roswell. I'm still totally obsessed with aliens. And I still totally believe that 
you if the aliens are real. I think that it would be naive of us to think that we are alone in the vastness of space. Okay, so just a little, because, I mean, that's what I'm doing tonight, I guess. Um, everybody listening, pull up YouTube right now. Actually, not right now, but make a note. To pull up YouTube when you're done listening to this. And Google the song, Alien Abduction Probe, by Hasey Dixie. By Hasey Dixie. You will thank us. Or you'll curse us, because it'll get stuck in your yeah. head. And I would sing it. But I've learned my lesson. Um, Justin Timberlake had to pay like $4,000 for just a clip of poop in a jar. And we don't have that kind of money. Yeah. So we'll just tell you. YouTube it. Why do they always probe you in the butt? Like, well, I mean, it's an easy access point, I guess. And your mouth is not? Your ear is not? Why your, why your butt? Poop samples? Uh, I mean... I don't, why at the vet do they always stick a thermometer in my dog's butt? Because they can't stick it in her mouth because she'll eat yeah, it. Yeah, true. She would. I don't know. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have on the aliens, and it's kind of a sad story that there's nothing. I mean, there might be stuff, but not that we know well, of. At least we know the Hangar 18 is a real building. I mean, that's something, right? Didn't... I wonder if like, the people who work the switchboards at Rock Patterson ever get calls about alien sightings. Um, I don't know. Actually, hold on. I do, yes, they do get calls about aliens. Or yes, they have got calls about aliens. And I don't know what they did with the call once they got it. But I don't think that like it went anywhere. But I mean, we know that Members of our Air Force and members of our Navy, um, our Naval Air Force, have engaged in the sky with technology unknown to us on Earth. Pilots have came forward after the after they've retired. I mean, and commercial airline pilots have also experienced. Yes unusual encounters with other aircraft in the sky. I think that it... And there's too many of these accounts from too many people who, you know, are in authority, who have trust, to just completely dismiss it as crazy people claiming aliens. Does Eric, does Hangar 18 house alien aircraft? I don't know. I can say that as close as we are to Wright Patterson, that we have, growing up especially, we would see weird planes in the sky often. And it would turn out to be Wright Patterson testing new aircraft. We saw the stealth before they announced that it was a plane. Because they were, they were finally doing some test runs over our area and we saw it. So, I mean, it, it probably houses some sort of experimental um, aircraft. Yeah, things that they're not ready to release to the public, but... Something that they're not ready for us to see yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm already never going to be allowed on base again, so, I mean... <laughs> this is the episode that does it for me. I'm sorry. Holly, we can never give you a pass. You can't even be on base for an hour. <laughs> You're probably going to get banned from the visit from the um, museum now. Probably. So, it, Rob Patterson is not only known as an alien epicenter. I didn't even know it was known as an alien epicenter. That's what I'm saying is that I was that I was so excited about this shirt thing, and that when I walked in, when I walked into the uh, museum, I was like, "What? There's alien stuff." And I'm, I'm sure that he probably mentioned it, and it. I just did not put two and two together on what he was saying until like I actually saw the alien stuff. But I will post a picture of me and the cute little alien on Instagram this week because it's adorable. Do you want a pet alien? I would love to have. You know, a pet that's probably alien. what. That's I mean, probably what can't you be any worse than the kids. That's probably what you saw in your um, family room that once. 
Honestly, I've often thought that because I, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't have. I just can't explain it. I just that's what I've always thought that it was because it was not like any ghost I'd ever seen. And our listeners are probably like, "What?" We may have mentioned. We have, and I don't even remember what episode that was. I don't either. But um, when I was married to um, the girl's dad. He still lives in this house. Um, we lived in a house that... Now, hold on. We need to back up and say that this house has been in his family since yes. it was built. In yes. 1982. And before that, that was it was just farmland. Yeah. So, um, and nobody has died in the house. That also, I feel like you need to say that. Because the house was was bought and it was his great-grandma's house. And then his grandmother rented it out after she passed away. But she passed away in the nursing home. She wasn't even at the house. They rented it out to a couple of different people. And then we moved into it in 2004. It's just a very nondescript brick ranch house. Ranch house, yeah. Um, at one point, it had a carport. But they built a room onto the carport. And it was a very makeshift room. Like, honestly, I don't even know that it's super up to code. Concrete floor steel. I think they did put carpet over it. But, like, it was not insulated. Um, but it was a room. And they did not take out the wall separating the kitchen to, uh, to this carport room. They just took out the window and added shelves. It was really cute. I actually liked that a lot. I could put, like, decorative stuff there. And then where the door was that would walk out to the carport, they just took that out. So it was really just kind of opened, but not really, you know. So one night I was by myself and I don't, I was hardly ever there by myself. So I'm not for sure where Mike and the girls were, but they were gone all night. So I'm thinking that he must have taken them to visit his mom, but don't hold me to that. I don't know. I don't. I cannot remember why I was home alone, but I was. Right in front of that window, we had a small, like, dorm-sized refrigerator that we would keep drinks in. And this has absolutely nothing to do with Rat Pat. But anyway, so, but what we had turned that carport room into was we had our desktop computers down there. And I had my craft stuff, which, wow, I wish I had a designated craft room now. Um, that was that was all that was in there, and we had like a really old TV that wasn't in there. I was watching TV in the living room. Went to get something to drink, and I could look down into the room, and the light from the kitchen was shining. So I mean, I could see in there, the light was off back at me was this and I know that you're when I say this was a really I can only describe it as a doughboy it kind of looked like a and we're not talking about a world war one soldier no it kind of looked like a thin Pillsbury doughboy like no rolls or anything like that but it was like doughy white and it looked like if I reached out and touched it that it would be super soft but obviously I didn't touch it and it had like places for eyes and I think they were like black but like there was features like I, I mean I could tell that it like would have had a mouth and eyes but it was all completely nondescript so I don't I think it was just like an outline of like maybe a smile or so I don't I can't remember all of those details I just remember that it looked like a little doughboy and me and it just sat there and stared at each other and I did not move and it did not move and it was literally just a shock to see me stand there and looking at it as as I was to see it. I mean we were just like oh, I can't believe I'm seeing this and I mean we stood that way for probably for 60 seconds and Finally, I was just like, uh, okay. And I just backed up out of the room and we didn't break eye contact until I got to the other room. 
And I immediately called Heather and was like, you are not going to believe what I just saw. But then... I wanted to come up there right then. But, but when I went back I mean, into that room, I, you know, I didn't see anything. It was gone. I've never seen it. Um, but it was just the absolute weirdest thing I've ever encountered. So I've always thought it was probably an alien. But it didn't... And it did not abduct me, so that was also good. You should have called Wright Patterson Air Force Base. I should have. You know, the funny thing is, is had I called Wright Pat at that, he may have been the person that answered the phone. And then he would have thought you was crazy. Well, actually, I would have said Holly McKenzie, and he would have not known who Holly, unless he recognized my voice. He would have typed you into the computer and <laughs> had me committed. <laughs> Where I would have been banned years before now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, did you see any ghosts while you was in the museum? Not really. But you know the museum is supposed to be incredibly haunted. I got that. What's really funny is that one of the most haunted planes I took a picture of. Would that be the... Black Mariah? No. Well, I may have gotten a picture of that too. Let me scroll through my pictures and see. No, the strawberry bitch. But I took a picture of it because I was like, oh, look how cute. They're naming planes after me. I took a picture of that one and the fiery ginger. Aww. Um, What does the Black Mariah look like? It's a silver plane. Mm, aren't they most of them? It has a train car with wings painted on the side of it. Does it have a mouth? No. Its nose okay. is glass. Mm, let me look. It was used to transport helicopters mm. and um, and troops, but um, people who work there can say that they can hear moans coming from the plane, and you know, being moans and groans of uh, wounded troops that was being transported. I did not hear anything like that, but I'm, I'm going to tell you that it is kind of. Seriously. Oh, creepy. I'm sorry. That is not the Black Mariah. The picture I was looking at was was Boxcar. And it dropped the atomic bomb on Nagasaki, Japan. Okay, well, I have to ask, but I think I got a picture of Hangar 18. Oh, awesome. Yeah, sorry, that's why I was so excited. Um, no, I don't think I got a picture of that yeah, plane. Um, the, one of the planes that you were talking about Strawberry Bitch is said to have to have the only violent spirit at the USAC Museum. Well, I have to tell you, it made me scream. Why? Wow. Okay, so we're walk we're walking through the museum, and it's really cool. Like seriously, uh, even if you are not, I don't know why you'd be listening to us if you don't care anything about paranormal. But let's say hypothetically that you do not care anything about the paranormal. It really is freaking a cool place. Like, seriously, seriously cool. I did not notice at first that they have mannequins of, well, they have just, like, mannequins dressed up sitting in the cockpit of these planes. And I didn't notice it until I took a picture of the strawberry bitch, walked past it, saw a mannequin sitting in it, and I screamed. <laughs> <laughs> One of the janitors, sorry, a former janitor who is speaking off the record, Claims that he was actually physically attacked by the ghost that haunts that particular B-24D. Apparently it slapped him. I can, I mean, I could see that, I could see it being haunted because the planes are real. Um, they're not, they're not like. They're not props, they're not reproductions. Models or. They are. 100% right. real, they've been used. So, I mean, I, I could see it, especially because usually things are haunted because uh, there's a lot of energy that happened. Like, um, you're terribly scared or you die violently or... All of the above. Uh, all of the above. And... And in this case, I can't remember which one it is, but one of the planes still has blood stains. Yes, that is the... Oh, I have it in my notes somewhere because I thought that was very interesting. 
That is a helicopter. It is a Sikorsky UH-19B and its sole job was to medevac troops during the Korean War and the Vietnam War. Yeah, so not only are you super scared and you're probably going to die, but you're also like in a lot of pain too. So it's kind of like the ghosty trifecta. This helicopter's name was Hop Along. And museum staff say that they can actually see the pilot inside um, flipping switches and trying to maneuver the helicopter to get out of harm's way. And his blood still actually stains the seat that he sat in when he died. Damn it. I know. Uh, you know what? I'm totally sad that one, I can't see. And two, I have an aversion to khaki and camo. Because I totally would have made a fantastic pilot. I could stand up. Like we went through this one thing where I think it was a plane. Maybe it was a helicopter. I'm not really for sure because I didn't pay attention to it as we were walking up the steps. But like you, there was this like you got seats on either side. And then there's a little thing in the back where you drop bombs. And I totally could just stand up just perfectly fine. I didn't have to bend over. You're weird. Do you know that would have been a great job for me. I could have fucking bombed people. Holly's just a tad bit violent. I would be the violent, <laughs> the violent coach ghost in Strawberry Bitch. You know, we'd probably be friends. He'd be like, oh, you hate people too? Let's hang out. Anyway, it really is a cool place. Yeah. Well, um, there's another building um, on base that is supposed to be haunted. And it actually sits um, in kind of the housing section in what used to be known as Huffman Prairie, which is actually where the Wright brothers worked on their planes at. And it is a house that belonged to Henry H. Hat Arnold. Okay, I think I drove past this house. Um, a lot of commanders have lived in the house over the years. But according to the Ghost Adventures crew, which I'm not too big a fan of those guys. Um, they claim that at least five ghosts haunt this house. Of course, with them it could also be a mouse that made a noise and it scared them and then one of them accidentally slammed a door or a vibrating heating duct but they claim to hear um sounds in the bathroom and a girl's voice a girl laughing in the dining room cool but no word on who of who the spirits may be well i don't know i don't either but i'm sure that's something that if one wanted to do the research they could find very easy yeah. Because we have information on on, you know, people who lived in that area for quite a ways back. Right. I mean, you know what's really funny about the whole ghost adventures thing? And why do I always start with sentences with, you know, what's really funny when it really it's not funny. It's just interesting. Because funny equals interesting? Uh, I guess. Anyway... You know what's really interesting? Ernie was there at the base when the ghost hunters came. Really? Did he see any ghosts? Uh, no, actually, he never saw or anything the whole time he was there, apparently. Did he see any ghosts at your house? Honestly, I think every time he's here, my ghosts are super quiet. I don't know. I personally would absolutely love to work in a museum because I love working around haunted things. Yeah, they were um, they were working on the museum when we were there. They were um, moving stuff around and I guess uh, maybe building on new exhibits or something. So you, it was so crazy because we would like we'd walk one way and then we would come to a dead end and we'd have to turn around and then we'd walk another way and then we'd come to a dead end. Well, now the museum there is pretty much just one big cavernous hangar for the most part, isn't it? it it is, but they had stuff blocked off because they're, uh, not, not that the stuff was blocked off and we couldn't see everything. It was just like, there would be like a piece of equipment or something. So we would have to turn around and get to what we wanted to look at from a different way. Whereas before, I'm assuming, I don't, it was the first time I was ever there, you could just walk through it all. 
Actually, it's not really when Kevin is hanging. It's really like there's two. Because there's like maybe there's super old stuff and then there was like more modern stuff. But if you are anywhere near Dayton, Ohio, you really need to go. And it's completely free. And it they're open like all the time. Free is good. I like free Until museums. Until 5 o'clock. I yeah. actually have, I probably would not do it at Rock Patterson because something tells me they would not be um, as open and receptive to it. But I have a habit of when I visit old museums, the first thing I do is find a staff member who doesn't look super busy and ask them about the ghosts. If You can find out some very interesting information by just, you know, asking. Um, I did not find that people there had much of a sense of humor. They're at work. They're serious. They're government employees. Government employees don't seem to have a lot of fun when they're on the job. Okay, now this is funny. This is a funny story. So, Ernie was going into his surgery. And he went back without me. And then, like, he was back there for a little while. And then they get him, like, in a gown and situated. And then I could come back and, like, you know, take his belongings and stuff with me. And... I thought he was joking that I needed to go down to the car and get his CPAP machine because if he woke up after the surgery and he may need it because of um, sleep apnea or some something like that. But I had to get it and bring it up for them to test it to make sure it's not a bomb before they took it back and used it on him. That's weird. And I said, I know, isn't it? So I was like, I will never be able to find the car and then find my way back here. I won't because we parked on one side of the building and then ended up like walking to the other side of the building and then we were up four flights. I still don't even know where we were. There's no way I would have found my way back to the car and then back up. I literally did not leave the waiting room because I was terrified I Do wouldn't they not find have my way around. CPAP machines available in a hospital? I, That's weird. I don't know. Anyway, the point is that I go, I go back, and he tells me I need to go get this, and I'm like, I cannot go get this. So they take him to, they take him down the hall for something. Like they're not for the surgery, but they take him down the hall for something. And while down there, uh, this comes in and is talking to me about going to get this CPAP and I was like I cannot go get this CPAP I will not be able to find my way back and she said oh that's okay we probably don't need it anyway you're fine don't worry about it and I'm like okay that's cool I won't worry about it so he comes back and he's like oh you have to go get this and I said no she said I didn't need to that it'd be fine and he was like did you talk her out of that and I'm like do you literally think I can talk Arnold out of going to get something if they really thought that I needed to? You probably could. <laughs> if anybody can, it's probably. you. Probably. Well, I, I, I didn't even try. I just said, I'm not going to be able to find my way down and back. And she said, it's cool. And I was like, okay. Although I did get a little testy with them because the doctor was like, oh, what side are we are we cutting on today? The left? And he was like, no, it's the right or whatever. It was the opposite, whatever. And I was like, um, I do not freaking feel comfortable right now. Like, if, is he going to come back without a leg? Is he going to be missing an arm or something? Like, I, I don't know that I want you to take him back now. That would make me very angry if I was a patient in the hospital and they asked me what leg I needed to work on. Well, it wasn't a leg, but I mean... But yeah, I was just like, well, he's going he's gonna to come back missing body part or something. Now, it was all fine, and, and he came back fine. But I was just, I was very concerned after that. And the guy was like, well, this is like my third one today. I don't care. That does not, still doesn't make me feel any better. I mean, goodness. If I would take my dog in to be fixed, and it's like third or like sixth, I'm spaying that day. I still expect the dog to come out with the proper surgery done. <laughs> seriously the longer this episode goes on the more i'm convinced i'm never going to be allowed back probably not i don't know i think that ohio in general has a high number of ufo sightings so does kentucky though true and i mean 
I remember us seeing UFOs when we was younger. Do you remember this? I do. Okay. I mean, I remember it happening so often that it just became sort of a eh, event. Right. Um, there's actually this spot in Kentucky where our dad lived for a time when he was little. Dad's family moved around a lot. So, yes. A we lot. do mention almost every place we talk about in this episode is dad lived there for a bit because they moved around a lot. Um, it's in, I think it's in Montgomery County or it's right on the line with another county close to Montgomery County. Um, a place called Sand Mountain. Um, their house was haunted. The house next door to him was haunted. There was ghost lots that you could see up and down the road. But when they lived in a different house at the towards the bottom of the hill, at the base of the hill, they said that you could actually see UFOs. No, this happened this happened when they was on the hill. That grandma said that you could watch in the horizon UFOs playing like it was playing a game of tag on the horizon. Moving way too fast for any planes that we have to you know, and maneuvering in ways that planes we had at the time couldn't maneuver. So, I mean, it's possible. It's possible that it's a UFO. It's possible that it's something from Wright Patterson that they're just playing with. But I remember it being a regular occurrence when we was little to see weird things in the sky. Yeah. Um... So I have one more place to talk about. Not really place. One more building to talk about. And that is Building 70. Which, now I know nothing about Building 70. That's fine. I obviously was not allowed to go into Building 70 because I am a bad girl. And you do not have security. You barely have security clearance to get into a hospital. I barely have security clearance to get into a hospital. Although... Again, let's pause for a second and reflect on this. Um, when they were, they did give me my clearance pass thing to whatever to get on. Um, somehow it has a weight on it, and I don't know how they would have gotten a weight because my driver's license does not have a weight on it. And I asked Ernie if he gave them a weight when he filled out my paperwork and he said no so if that is the case then Travion guessed my weight and guessed it 15 pounds lighter than I am so he must have a wife he must actually I don't think he had a <laughs> ring on but he looked like he was 12 I mean he looked so young so young and if you're listening to this Travion you looked young that's I think a it's good the, thing though yeah, that I'm, means you're going to age well. I, I really wanted to fix you up with my 14-year-old daughter. But I I guess it's too much of an age gap now. <sighs> but yeah. You're recently turned 14-year-old da daughter. Recently turned 14, yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, go him for guessing me 15 pounds lighter. Um, okay, so Building 70 is just an office building. And uh, this girl, Rachel Castle... Um, was the last to leave. Well, this is what triggered ghost hunters coming to um, to do the investigation. I'm really surprised that the United States military allowed, that allowed ghost hunters access to I have a theory. A base. I have Recruiting? Mm-hmm. Yeah. My theory is all recruiting. Because, I mean, you look at the age group of the people that watch those shows, and it's their targeted age group. I mean, you know, there's old people like us, but we watch it just to complain about the fact that they scream and run at every moment. Yeah, Paris libs are so predictable. I, you know, and I don't even blame them. I'm sure that if we actually, like, cut the cameras and went on an investigation with them, that it would be fun. And it would be cool. I'm but sure You that turn on the cameras for the sci-fi channel, 
They have to up the dramatics. And they have to up the dramatics and they have to find something and it has to be this way. Otherwise, they're not going to get their ratings. And so, yeah, it's, um, I think that that's why the shows are always the same. I mean, it's the same with HGTV and the decorating shows. I mean, you, you know, on Love It or List It, that she's only going to be able to do two things out of their list of 10 things. And he's going to find a house that's absolutely perfect for him, but it's going to be over their budget and out of their area. I mean, it's just, that's just the way it is. But anyway. Yeah, so my thought on this is it was totally all recruiting. So, Rachel Castle sees this person, girl, uh, dressed in a different time period outfit. And she was standing... It like, was a polyester blue dress with a white r ruffled shirt under it. Right. Does that not sound hideous? It does. Um, I need to go up there and teach that girl how to dress. Because just because you're dead doesn't mean you have to dress old. Do you remember that meme that was like, just remember whatever you're wearing is going to be your ghost outfit for eternity? That terrifies me. That terrifies me more than just dying. Yes, because that means that, oh Lord, I look like a train wreck today. Well, I mean, I, I didn't die. I, well, I was dressed for work today because I, I visited sinners, but. If I killed over right now, I will spend the eternity. Yeah, a long sleeve t shirt and no pants. Um, if I died right now, I would look like I am the biggest fan of our USAF, but I also have comfy sweatpants on, so I'm a very comfortable supporter of our military. You need some USAF sweatpants. <gasps> I do. I know where I can get myself some. The Wright Patterson Air Force Base gift shop? Which I'm not allowed to go to because it's on the opposite side of the base. And I'm not allowed there. Oh, so sad. I know. Do you know how much money they would have made off me had they just let me over there? Yeah. Listen, if anybody from the Air Force, even the USAF is listening to this episode, y'all could have made a killing off my sister because she's an impulse shopper. <laughs> She impulse bought another craft item this week. And she didn't need it. That's true. But, um, yeah. The woman said that the ghost she saw looked like her grand reminded her of her grandma. Or how her grandma would look going to work. Yeah, see, I didn't even, I didn't get to see Building 70. I'm so sad about that. Also around the building people here you know the usual ghostly stuff uh footsteps kids giggling door slamming mm. lights kid ghosts are creepy they are i mean like i know emmy says that cora is her best friend but that's a little creepy that you know cora is a little ghost that haunts a house yeah um you know somebody would shout your name and then you turn around and nobody's there elevators yeah um it happened one particular time um i'm trying to find the woman's name okay i can't find a last name but all i can find is that the woman's name was valerie and she only went by val her co-workers only referred to her as val and she was openly making fun of the fact that Rob Patterson is supposed to be haunted. And making fun of her co-workers for believing in ghosts. And the next thing she hears is, out of nowhere, somebody say, Hey, Valerie! Ooh. Yeah. And then her printer just started spitting out blank papers. Well, that's what you get for making fun of the ghosts. Um, the office television shut off. Um, I don't know why, but like, was it in the middle no, of the No, she had just shooting? turned off the television and then poof, the TV flips back on. Um, yeah. I mean, she got, she got what she wanted. She called out the ghost and the ghost was like, hey, Valerie, I'm going to show you I'm real. 
I think this is kind of cool though. This actually happened in building 219 on the third floor, which used to be part uh, of the hospital. Right, it used to be part of the hospital, which, uh, listen, that hospital is a freaking maze. Um, I've, I've never encountered a hospital that confusing to get around in. And I have been, I've been to Cincinnati Children's Hospital. I have been to UK Actual Hospital and Marquee Cancer. And I've been to St. Joe, uh, the main campus, and St. Joe East. And I've been able to find my way around all of those, which are, I believe, bigger hospitals. The biggest hospital I've ever been to was Cleveland Clinic. And it is massive, but it is so well laid out. Anyway, so on the third floor, um, this janitor propped open all of the doors on this floor so that he could empty out the trash cans. And then all of the doors just slammed shut. I kind of think that's kind of cool. I would do that if I was a ghost. I would. I totally would. Yeah, but it was all like at the same time, which that's super awesome. Um, and he apparently fled the building. Yeah, um, Valerie Castle has sort of became, not Valerie Castle, um, what was her name, Rachel Castle? Rachel Castle. Yeah, has sort of became an archivalist for ghostly happenings at Wright-Patterson. She actively seeks out other people who have, you know, lived on base or worked on base to see if they have ghost stories. And, um, at one time she talked to... The the chief of the legal department. Apparently, they were having a meeting in the JAG office um, in a room in the basement when suddenly they started hearing a very loud and disruptive child playing and running outside of the room. So, the chief of the, J of the legal department sent one of his JAG officers out to tell the child to stop. That seems scary. The officer looked all over the downstairs of the building. And even went upstairs to ask other people if they saw a child. And there was no children in the building. Ooh. This is the episode for fake sound effects. We really we really need to start adding sound effects in. We need to become that technical. We're lucky if we just get these things edited. Reasonably edited. The... Basement of the building used to be the hospital. Oh, morgue. Was. Where else are you going to put a morgue? On the roof. Probably. You know that would be a good place. Apparently, since um, the filming of the Ghost Adventures episode, sorry, Ghost Hunters episode, no cleaning staff will work nights in building two nights. That's cool. I mean, that it's that scary. I wonder like when they actually get their cleaning done because I think most offices get their cleaning done like you know when people's not there. Messing it up. I guess they just work um, evenings. I guess. But yeah, it was filmed January of 2008. But apparently the guys from Ghost, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Hunters and Ghost Avengers are different entities, claim that Rob Patterson was one of their best investigations. And yet they did not get to go into Hangar 18, so I'm just not buying it. For those of you who are, I don't think Ghost Hunters are even on TV anymore. Are they not? I don't know. Um... But the guys on Ghost Hunters just started out as regular, everyday paranormal investigators for fun. Their full-time job was plumbers. Really? Yes. Oh, see, that makes me like them. And they did this a hobby, did this as a hobby, and a network picked it up as, you know, one of the very first ghost hunting shows on TV. I will say that I don't like ghost hunters, but I like them a whole lot more than I like ghost adventures. Okay, my only dislike with them is is probably not even their fault. I'm sure that they are, I'm sure they're great people, and I'm sure that when the cameras are not rolling, that they're legit. But I just can't stand that 
I cannot stand that TV makes people, makes reality TV non-reality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is that... I hate how everything is over-dramatized. Right. And I hate that they take... Like, okay, so we have an episode where you don't find anything. We can make that fun. We can make that interesting. We don't have to scream and run away at everything. And and that's how Ghost Hunters started. They had several episodes where they just found nothing. And that's great. And told the homeowners, hey... Your house isn't haunted. But that doesn't, you know, but it, that doesn't sell advertising and that doesn't make ratings. But that's reality of ghost hunting. Is you're not going to find a ghost every time you investigate a place. Sometimes you're going to have to tell them, I'm sorry, what you're experiencing is, you know, something completely mundane like you've got a mouse in your attic. Or, right, although I did come home to my back door open today. You need some security cameras. Yeah, nothing was taken. And tripwire. Like, literally nothing was taken. Well, everyone just needs to be warned that Hannah has an AR-15, and they are known to kill people. Yeah, all you have to say is, AR, activate. And it jumps up and shoots people. Yes. Did you head count all the cats and dogs? I did. They were all still here, too. Do we have a stupid criminal? There was the bat-wielding sisters... Yes. Do you want to... Apparently, there are other people like me and Holly in this world, and it's scary. And these people are from Florida! Yeah, okay, so the funny thing about this is that I read this... Okay, the story. Bat-wielding sister savagely beat woman in alleged road rage incident. Now, a sane person would listen to that bat-wielding sisters and think, What? A baseball bat? Right? Because that's the logical thing. No, <laughs> in my head, I laughed out loud because I l was literally thinking that they beat this woman <laughs> with a bat. Like the an animal. The bat. <laughs> and so I read this entire story where these two sisters were driving in separate cars and this this woman cuts one of them off and then the other one you know pulls up beside her and it's like you cut my sister off and that's just rude and then they she pulled into a strip mall hoping to get away from them but they pulled in and they blocked her and i don't know why she stupidly got out of the car but she did and they started beating her with a baseball bat and at that point that it said baseball bat i was like huh and it it took me a minute because I was literally thinking a bat, like an animal. And I don't know why I was thinking that. Because you're weird. But yeah, that's what I was thinking. But I feel like there was another one that I sent you that was an actual funny one and not just funny because I'm stupid. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. People. This is probably the ultimate. So, man wearing a bull costume tries to burn down his ex-boyfriend's house with spaghetti sauce. What? Yeah. Uh, Derek Irving and John Silva were arrested in Florida. Woo! Go Florida this week. We make so much fun uh, of Florida. I feel bad I for Florida. I feel bad for us. Um, so, they robbed Irving's ex-boyfriend. Um, and they stole his flat screen TV. But they thought, oh, we need to cover our tracks. Let's do this by starting a fire. So, they put a can of spaghetti sauce into a pot turned it on, and then put a washcloth near the burner. Um, this was at 2 a.m. So, who is making spaghetti sauce without any meat? Just who is heating up a can of spaghetti sauce at 2 a.m.? Unless they have also been doing some pot. Now, also to make fun of Kentucky, the victim 
said, I'm from Kentucky, and I have never seen anger like this. I'm from Kentucky, and I've seen anger like that. <laughs> I mean, it's not like beating somebody with a bat. I just totally snorted. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway so the victim had a home security system and it told him because he was at work that uh, someone had covered his security camera he contacted the police and the police found the guys a couple blocks away with the guy's tv and his air conditioning unit and they had the empty jar of spaghetti sauce with them you know i mean at least it was a jar of spaghetti sauce that put the high class stuff yeah. I get the nine. But they were wearing a can bull, of spaghetti sauce. They were wearing a bull onesie. What? Florida just on a whole nother level. I know. <sighs> Funny. So I think that's all I got for the week. I wish I was able to get some more stories. Apparently, you're not allowed to talk about, you know, the ghosts and aliens at Wright Patterson because then yeah. you end up on lists. Wait, hold on. I got a poop story. It's not a stupid criminal. It's not even a criminal. But apparently, in a town in Alabama, for like two months, there has been 10 million pounds of human poop. Biohazardous waste sitting on the train tracks that has just been abandoned in train cars. Um, the town is Parish, and it is home to a whopping 982 people. Woo! And they said that for the past year, waste management facilities in New York and New Jersey has been shipping tons of bio waste to Big Sky Environmental. At the landfill in Adamsville, Alabama. Um, but in January, the town of West Jefferson filed an injunction against Big Sky to keep the industri- the biohazardous waste from being stored in their town or near their town. So the, the poop that was in route there just got left on the tracks. Sounds like a shitty situation. Yeah. And there is no zoning laws that in parish that prevent the waste from being stored there. So it's just going to be stored there. And apparently it is starting to stink. Well, yeah, it's shit. I mean, that's a deep south story. You don't, I don't think you get those stories up north. That's a deep south story. That's true. So there you have three stupid criminals tonight. Well, I guess two stupid criminals and stupid poop. That's to make up for the week or two weeks or however long it is that we've been gone. I feel like I was in such a daze when we... You probably don't remember the um, Chris Benoit episode we recorded. Well, I remember editing it for like four years. Uh, No, it wasn't four years. But I remember editing it forever in between hacking up a lung. But you're alive now. Barely. Barely. I mean, I still feel so weak. Like, I mean, I know I was super sick. And I'm never sick. And if I am, I'm usually over it within like a day or two. Even like the last time I had the flu. I'm the one who gets sick and keeps it forever. This was so out of character for me that I just don't even know how to. I'm just not mentally over the fact that I was sick for three weeks. She just can't even. I can't even. So... Um, if I don't have an alien shirt in my shop, but maybe I might do one and put one in my shop, like, by the time I edit this, if you guys want an alien shirt to commemorate the episode, um, or if you just want a swimming shirt and you're from, like, Roswell, New Mexico, or if you're not from Roswell, New Mexico, I have other things too, but anyway, if you'd like to visit my shop, it is Cat Hair Glitter. On Etsy. And I'll be doing new stuff now that I have my new fancy sublimation printer. Mm. That's my shameless plug at the end of this episode. Also, 
if you would like to um, start a podcast of your own, we just celebrated one year what? with Podbean. Yep, one year with Podbean. Happy and you anniversary. You probably know that because you got the bill for the next year. I <laughs> did. I got the bill yesterday. <laughs> um, so happy so, year anniversary to us at Podbean. Woo! Yes. And if you would like to start your own podcast and use Podbean, um, our affiliate code is Haunted Family PB, and it gives us a little bit of money back. That then in turn goes to paying for the next year of our epi- er, uh, of our episode, next year of our podcast. And I mean, I know we say this every week, but I just love Podbean. The analytics are great i love being able to find out where all of our listeners are um i love that it is so easy because after i've edited for hours i don't feel like having to do anything else that is mentally draining and i literally just click upload and then type in what it is and it's good to go um congratulations california you have once again overtaken connecticut what? Well, for our all-time downloads. For the last three months, Texas is now in the lead. And Connecticut has fallen. Oh my god, Connecticut, you're not even in our top ten. What? what? No. Oh. Connecticut, we love you. Maybe we need to do some ghost stories about some Texas places. I alternate between wanting to live where it's super hot and wanting to live where it's super cold. You just need to win the lottery and buy a house in both locations. I do. I could winter in Texas and I could summer in New England. That would work because you don't want to be in Texas during the summer. If you guys bought enough shirts from me, I could totally make this dream happen. Yeah, that'd be a lot of shirts, Holly. (laughs) I believe in our listeners. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say. Do you? Oh, don't forget um, to... Visit our website, Haunted Family Podcast, and click tweet, right? Or share us. How do they do that? It's been so long. <laughs> I forgot how they tweet. You were actually sick when I came up with this. Yes. Go to our website, Haunted Family Podcast, slash tweet, and then click on that really big tweet us. And it will bring up your Twitter account with a pre-filled tweet that says, Love the new episode from the Girls at Honda Family Podcast. And then hit tweet it. And it will send it out to all of your followers. Yay. Yeah. I'm very proud of that. Took me a while to figure that one out. We are not tech-savvy individuals, which is another reason why we love Podbean. Yes, very much so. So, um, before we say goodbye for the day, for the night, whatever you're listening to us, go to iTunes and like us, rate us, tweet about us, Instagram about us, Facebook about us, share us with your friends, share us with your enemies, visit our YouTube channel, we've got some awesome videos up, and thanks for listening. And if you decide that you want to go to um, the Air Force Museum, let us know and we will meet you there because it's super cool. Yeah. Uh, and Heather's not saying anything. She's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've, I've never been. Home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I try to it's drag you to museums home. all the time and you're like, no. It's a bunch of old stuff. Well, and this is old stuff, but it was just really fun. So I should be able to drag you to the Smithsonian now? Uh, I don't know about that. Thanks for listening. We truly appreciate every one of our listeners. And we love hearing from you all. Yeah, thanks for really do. Thanks for being part of this journey with us. Yeah, because, I mean, we are... This is our second year. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Happy second anniversary to us. This is... Um, this is awesome. I'd forgotten about that, but yeah, we launched on April 4th, but we didn't, like, we weren't consistent, and we didn't really have good quality for 
almost a year. So really I like to think of it as it's our one year anniversary, but cool. Anyway, thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.